Hi everybody, this is Ellen. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make the candy in a wrapper. Um, I think it turned out super cute. The candy inside is removable and that is where the little faces are. And I think they're still cute this way. Um, I did change the background because I do plan to use the clear bands again for the wrapper and of course you can't see those on a white background so um, that is why we have a different color. Um, this kind of stays the way it is after we secure it so you can kind of keeps its shape so you can keep them together. Um, this is the one I'm going to show you how to make. I did make a much larger one the first time around um, and obviously that takes way more bands and although it, I think it's super cute as well um, we just do the smaller one and most people can figure out how to make it the bigger one too so but super cute and I think the faces still look great this way it's kind of different except for he looks like he's a little upset there you go. Now he's a little sad. Okay. You're not happy. Sorry. Um, band wise, the um, wrapper, the clear bands that I used were 165 and then I used 56 red ones kind of mixed in there and the ends and then each one of the little candies takes um, 52 for like the yellow part will be 52 and then um, some of these, or actually all of these ones, I use the um, the beads for the eyes, but I'm actually going to use the um, wrapped bands this time to show you how to do that. Um, a lot of times people ask me, how do you do that? And I don't, you know, why didn't I don't have any beads? And um, it's actually a little bit easier using the wrapped bands, so I'll show you how to do that as well. Um, so you want either beads or bands for the eyes, and then um, cheek bands and a mouth band. So. But we shall get started. We'll start with the candy itself. It's on one loom, wrong end towards me. And we're going to make a pink one. And what you're going to want to do first is I have the bands that I'm going to use for my eyes, which will be two black bands, the band for the mouth, and then two bands that I'm going to use for the cheeks. We're going to be working on six pins, so kind of anywhere you want, just six pins. On the lower pin of your six pin circle, you'll take your mouth band and wrap that around that pin one time, like that. Sorry, I know my black background kind of eliminates the black mouth, but just wrap it around one time around the lower pin on our six. And we're going to take our cheek bands, and those are going to go on the next two pins out. So it's just one band, and I'm going to wrap it around this pin on the right first. Wrap it around four times, so that's one, two, and you can either just keep kind of pulling it and wrapping it around until you get to the four times around. or the other cheek on the other side. So I'll take that band, wrap it around one time, then grab both the bands and wrap them around again. So there I just grabbed two and pulled them over at the same time. On this side I did four individually. Should still be able to kind of twist it around to get the kind of smooth look either way you do it. So. So far, mouth, two cheeks, next pins up, then our eyes are going to go on the next ones. I'm going to put them on now with the wrapped bands. If you do not want to um, use the wrapped bands and you still want to use the beads, I'll show you how to, or I'll tell you how to put them on. Um, it's just kind of, it's a little bit difficult, but um, it is still doable. But So the two eye bands are going to go on the same way as the cheek bands did. So the one band, next pin up wrap it around once, twice, and this time I'm just going to grab both those bands and wrap it around one more time. Like that. And then the other side. And both bands. Like that. If you're going to use the beads for the eyes, um, just leave this spot up here 
leave these two pin spots blank. So now what we're going to do is take our bands, the color that you want for your um, your candy. And you want two bands, and we're just going to do a starburst right around the top of our bands that we put on. So using the center pin, I'm just going to go to the six pins around. It's two bands. like that. Then you'll want two bands and you want to wrap them around the center twice. Or three times, I guess. Depends how you look at it there. So, try it again. Maybe one, two, and three. Then you'll take your hook, go in through those center bands, grab the top two bands wherever they are, pull them up through and pull them back towards the outside and you'll do that all the way around. Just grab the next top two and keep going. Like that. So now if you're going to do the beads for the you'll want to put them on. In all the ones that I did, I actually wrapped it around both or all four bands that are on those pins right there. So it's a little complicated, that's why I chose to do the wrap bands instead. You still want to take your piece of um, craft wire or whatever you have that you can get into that V shape. You'll have to put it up through all of the bands that are part of the, like you won't have this black band there, but you'll have the other four pull your wire up and take your bead. I use the seven millimeter pony beads on these. Slide it on there, pull it all the way down, um, and it gets pretty tight as you're pulling it onto the, um, the center here. It is possible, but it takes a little bit of finagling. But the easier way that I thought looked, still looked all right, which I don't know where my other candy went that had the eyeballs like that, but um, what you're going to do is just take the bands that you have underneath and pull them up over the top. Do the eyes, pull up the cheeks, pull up the mouth band, pull up the other cheek band, and pull up the other eye band. And then you can position these kind of around so that they're smoother looking so you don't have the crosses in the front. Before you go on just so it's a little easier at the end. Like so. You can see the face. You can push those down. And then two bands and we're just going to go all the way around the outside of our hexagon. like that. Then you go and you flip the bottom four bands all the way around. Go ahead and push that down. Now we're going to do another row just like that. So two bands all the way around the outside of the hexagon. Like that. Again, flip the bottom four.
And what I'm going to do before I put on the third row is I'm going to come in with my hook and pull the center up over the middle pin. And push down the bands around the outside. And then a third row all the way around. And it's two bands again. that. Flip the bottom four. Like so. So now we're ready to close it. And the part that is up is going to be on the outside, that's what we'll see. So as I'm going around, I'm just going to kind of make sure that this keeps puffing up and I don't um, invert it inside out. It shouldn't matter actually because the face should show through on the other side, but I'm um, just kind of keeping in custom with how the how I've done the other um, pieces, that's why. So I'm just going to take my hook and start up here and grab the bands all the way around. You can use that latch hook if you want to to make it a little bit easier, but it'll work on the rainbow loom hook as well. It's just a little tighter. So it'll look like that. Then you want to take two bands, put them on the end of your hook, and pull them through. Put both ends back on the hook, make a slip knot. Before you pull it too tight, squish the face down to kind of make sure everything evens out. Then pull tight. Then you want to hide your tail. So stick your hook up through somewhere. Grab your tail bands. Pull them in. Then you have your face. He does look a little sad, or it's kind of like he has little eyebrow effects from the banding, but um, if you take your hook, grab those bands, and pull them up. It's the same way with the beads, too, so. Just gotta pull them out, fix your smile. Looks pretty cute. You can pull your cheeks too. It's kind of an odd color combination, but um, you'll need two of these that to fit in here. Um, as far as how I've made this, so you want to so you have to make another one just like that. They're pretty simple. You probably won't even need to watch the tutorial again for them. Um, I hope the. I don't think that the beads make too much of a difference, so. Squish, squish. Now for the wrapper itself, I'm going to be using the um, clear bands, hence the black background, and the confetti bands that have that are basically clear with the little um, little dots on them of different colors. So, and this part is of course totally up to you and how you want to color it. On um, this one, I did the clear with the red jelly on the end, with mixed with the um, the clear as well. It's just the first, um, technically four rows starting are um, like alternating between the, in this case, the clear jelly and then the red jelly all the way around. Um, and then we switch to the inside color and then we switch back to the alternating colors. So I'm just going to change my alternating color from the red to the confetti bands. So what we're going to do like I said, the first four rows are alternating. So I'm going to start with the clear band and we're going to put it on, but we're going to cross the first row. So first clear, then a confetti, then a clear, and a confetti, 
and I clear. Make sure you keep crossing them. And then a confetti. So once you've gone up six, so I have the clear confetti, clear confetti, clear, clear confetti. We're going to come back towards the center with a clear. And come back down the other side to the beginning, alternating as you go. So confetti, clear, confetti, clear, confetti, mess up. <laughs> like that. It's just alternating. It, I mean, it realistically does not matter um, if you goof up any of the alternating up here um, because these are, um, they're just kind of meant to be a little bit of kind of color change in the end. So once you have that, we're going to go right over the top of this with another row. And I like to alternate what I did before. So um, this first row I did was the clear here. So then I'm going to start with a confetti on top and then do clear, confetti, clear. So I'll alternate that as I go around. I'm going to mark, consider this the first row, so I'm going to mark that up here. Keep my little guys safe. So this next row is just the alternate band. So I'm going to start with confetti and then go to clear, confetti, clear. And just follow right on top, alternating as you go around. So like that. So you have a cross row underneath and then you have a regular row right on top. And I kind of like to start in the kind of back area and then come forward just because once you, if you flip over this first one first, it comes up and it bunches up next to this next one and then it's kind of hard to see what you need to flip here. So I usually start back here at the end. I'm just going to flip the bottom two bands all the way around. The bottom two. And then see when you get to here, it's pretty easy to tell what she flipped. And then do the same thing on the other side. That is the second row. Push these down. And then we're going to do the same thing again, alternating the colors as we go around. Um, my last one, I had a confetti band here, so I'll start with the clear one and go around alternating between the confetti band and the clear band. And this will be the third row. So again, flip the bottom two all the way around. Except for on the end, it is the bottom one. Sorry if I didn't clarify that last row. bands down. That was row three, so we're going to do one more row with the alternating colors again. So I'll start with the confetti first, because I had it clear last time.
like that all the way around. So again, put the bottom two, except for on those first ones. It's just one. Same thing on the other side. and push your bands down. That was our fourth row. So I'll put these back where they belong now. So we're going to start over with the count. And this time it's just going to be the clear bands for me anyways because now we're in the middle section. Although I think it would look cute if you did that alternating all the way down with the confetti ones. Um, but we're just going to do eight rows just like we have been doing all along. So I'm just going to use the clear, eight rows. Let's make a mess here. I hope this shows up well, because that will be a bummer if it doesn't. To what I can see, it looks like it's fine, but... I'm sure somebody will tell me. So row all the way around in just the clear. We're not doing anything super fancy to do the transition. Then you're just going to flip the bottom two like before. And the bottom one on the end. That's one row, seven to go. It's so weird just using a single band because most things I've been doing are all double banded, but like that with the bands. But it's definitely not necessary to double band this. I will say that the um, the larger candy that I made. Um, it had 15 rows in the center instead of 8, if that is something that someone's interested in making a larger one. So there's two rows. Go for the third. larger one was actually more like, um, it was five of the alternating color rows and then 15 of the middle color and then five rows of the alternating color. And that one fit four candies pretty well. Like that. Again, flip. I always make things a little big sometimes when I'm starting because I'm like, oh, this is awesome. Just keep going. I want to make sure I have enough space. And then after I get done, I'm like, oh my gosh, this was a lot bigger than I intended. So it's row three. I'll do row four.
like that. Flip your bands. Bottom two. Except for the first one. Bands down. That was four. I'll do row five. Same thing. Like that. Flip your bands. I'm thinking this one will be pretty easy for most people to be able to do. Um, I know sometimes I get some, I guess it either I make them big or complicated, or I think this is kind of probably easier than my peas in the pod, which I know a lot of people enjoyed that one. And, uh, it's made the same kind of way. So that's row five. Push the bands down. Three more rows to go with the clear bands. Like that. Flip your bands. That's row six. And do row seven. So my family has just been getting over being pretty sick. It goes from flu to colds to ear infections to congestion to sore throats to uh, just you name it. It seemed like somebody had something at one time or another, or we all had it at once, which is awesome. That's definitely sarcasm, by the way. I don't like being sick. Like that. Flip the bottom bands again. So we're all still... Kids are... Or the two of those ones got ear infections after their colds, which is kind of pretty common. So they have the antibiotics they're finishing up. And I had to go back for different antibiotics to clear up whatever my congestion turned into. Like that. So that was row seven. So one more row to go. I'm not normally an antibiotic person because most times things are one band all the way around. Most things, most times things are viral, but there's a certain point where you just have to go in and have them check it out and decide. But my whole point of my, of this story was that I was, um, being sick. There wasn't a whole lot that I wanted to do or could do. And then taking care of everybody else and just kind of, they want to lay around and heal. So like that. Flip your bands again. So I spend a lot of time watching TV, which I don't normally do, and it's like a couple shows, it's like, really got me 
hooked into watching and I was like, don't do it because then you won't want to do anything else. It's so hard. Like my, I am definitely addicted to like The Walking Dead. I'm waiting for that to come back on February 8th. And um, it's like I'll work around things so that I can watch that on time. So that is our eight rows of the inside color. So push your bands down. And then we're just going to start doing the four rows of the alternating color. And you can start with really whatever um, color you want here. It doesn't really matter like compared to what was up here. So you start with the clear and then alternate to the out of the way. Then alternate to the other color that you're using. And just keep going around. Alternating. But anyways, it's bad when you get stuck into a TV program because then you want to watch it and you'll think about it and think, oh, well, I have to do that. Can't do that that night because I need to watch it or if I'm not going to be, um, you get all worked up about it and then you have to figure out, get DVRs or something so you can record it while you're, in case you're going to miss it and yeah, it just gets crazy getting hooked into a show like that. So flip your bottom two. I definitely was like, don't, don't enjoy the show too much. I don't want to watch it. I don't need another show to be addicted to. They were pretty interesting though. Mostly stuff on TLC. So there's one row. Three more to go. And I would say that your last three rows here, uh, make sure you always continue to go in a pattern the same way around. Um, because when we do close, like I'm going to start on the right side and then I come around to the left side. But when I close, I'm going to um, start on the left side and bring it back around to the right side. Just so it um, closes better and has a neater appearance. So just kind of maintain the same direction for the next few rows here. So I'm going to start with the opposite band from before. I had clear. Now I'm going to do the confetti and then alternate around. Like I remember um, with my daughter, I ended up, when I was pregnant with her, I ended up on bed rest towards the end because she kept, um, she kept flipping and going breech. And so we were trying everything to make sure she stayed the right way after I had had her turned. And so I ended up on bed rest and I started watching Heroes on Netflix not realizing that they never actually finished the whole thing, so I got through like the first five seasons or something like that, and then like, they can't be done yet. And then I go and look online and be like, nope, they just ended the series. I'm like, that's not cool. <laughs> so that's two. We'll do a, a third row, starting with the opposite color. Be clearer than confetti. So that was bad. It's like, no, I wanted to see what happened. I even watched the rest of it after I read that. I don't pay enough attention to things, I guess. TV. Then 
that. Flip your bands. And we have one more row to go. Push everything down. Start with the confetti first. Then clear. Last row, flip over the bottom four, or bottom two, sorry, have it. I will say that I'm pretty sure I know every episode of Paw Patrol, or Dora the Explorer, and Dora in the City, and Wally Kazam, and every other possible cartoon that you can find on Nick Jr., I believe it is entertains my children pretty well. Actually not so bad for kids. I like watching my three-year-old especially, getting all excited about the kind of figuring things out as we go along and answering the questions they ask. So there we have our wrapper. So now we're going to do to close this. As like I said, I started on my right and went around to the left. So on the left over here, I'm going to take this first band, take it off the loom, bring it back to the pin before, then I'll go through the top two bands, which is actually just that band that went from this second pin up to the first pin that we just brought back. I'm going to go through that band, or the top two bands, grab that bottom band, pull it back towards the pin before. Go through that band we just pulled through over and the next band down. And you should have, like I'm going through two confetti bands, technically, or what it looks like. So the top one's confetti and the second one's confetti, and I'm grabbing the clear one, pulling that up through, bringing it back, and now I'm going to be going through two clear bands, grabbing that lower confetti band, pulling that up through bringing it back, then I'm going through two confetti bands, grabbing the bottom clear, pulling it back, then I'm going through two clear, grab the confetti band, pull that up, then the top two confetti, grab the bottom clear, and we just keep doing that all the way around. But there are cartoons like Spongebob that entertaining for an adult, but Probably not the best for kids. So once you've gotten all the way around, you're going to have this last, the last one band technically, the um, wrapped around your last pin here. So this is where your open point is. So make sure you don't lose that. I'm going to take my hook and go through there, and then I'll just remove my wrapper from the loom. Everything should be secure except for what's on your hook. And all I'm going to do with what's on my hook is make a slip knot. And pull tight 
if you have the jelly bands, it probably wouldn't hurt if once you pull tight, if you look at it, you'll see that the loop is right over the top right here. I'm going to come up so that my hook is, you guys just kind of watch here, that's it's hard to explain everything, but coming up through, we have that little bump on the top. I'm going to grab that bump with my hook. So I have that little bump on my hook, and I'm going to pull that back through, and then pull tight. It kind of makes an extra little knot in the banding if you have a jelly band. So it should hold it more secure. So I just have a little wrapper like this. I want to remember that if you do pull this to kind of stretch it out, um, generally pulling back and forth this way would be better than pulling this way because you'll tighten it up and then it might not wrap all the way around your candy. But you can fix that um, after you've put it all on anyways. It's not what I did. If you hold it. So you have this end over here that we have the, um, the little slip knot on. If you look, we did the four rows down with the kind of alternating colors. So we have one, it's technically one, two, three, and four. So just somewhere around that area. It doesn't have to be perfect, but what I did was I took my hook and right around where the transition is between your co your colors for the main body and the kind of outside wrapper, I took my hook and I went through the row, just kind of alternating how I did went through it. So I'll go over the top here, back, over, back, I'm basically weaving my hook through. Now this is like uh, I don't know, understand what you're doing. That's okay. I will show you a different way to do um, the closing on the wrapper, but I think this way turned out um, the best when I was doing it. I'm just alternating my hook through. And it gets a little squishy when it's the everything on there. Then I took two bands, pulled it back through what I had weaved, And it gets kind of a little tough when you get towards the end because you're stretching it pretty far. You want to make sure you don't pick up a bunch of extra bands. You know, I've picked up one extra one. So I have it pulled through, kind of like a um, like a cinch bag. So I'll put both ends back on my hook, pull them through each other. And then the end that's on my hook, I'm going to grab it with my fingers, go through the center of it, and I'm going to wrap it around the end. And really one time's enough, but you can do two times or however many you want, but you just want to secure the band around. and tight to give it the little curling end. Then for the um, little slip knot tail that we have, you can either weave it in through or you can just bring it down and wrap it around as well. And so there's that way which is a little bit more complicated because you weave through. Um, it's not totally necessary though because you can also just Kind of gather up your end, get close to where the color change is, grab your two bands and wrap them around. You will have to do it as tight as you can though so that it doesn't slip around and then just kind of adjust it as you need to. So that's an option as well. Um, I just like doing it the kind of weaving it through because it does give a little bit different appearance to 
each side. And if you want, because we like kind of pulled this one down by um, pulling that slip knot, it gives it a little bit of a kind of curl. You can do the same thing on this side, just grab a band that's poking. Let's see, grab the end band here, which is U. Take that and wrap it around as well. So it gives another little curl on this end too. And then your candy will fit right inside. Like so. Awesome. I did have, um, the, I, they are all with a little gap here because otherwise um, you're using extra bands that you don't really need to use. But if you try and overlap this, you'd be adding, I think, what, it's like another 60 some bands just to close the, like, overlap these completely when really you can get them closed pretty well. So that's why you're like, oh, there's a little gap there. That's why. Try and save a few bands. But that is my candy in a wrapper. Hopefully um, you enjoy it and it's not too difficult. I'm also hoping very much so that this turned out well so that um, you can see it when um, I go to editing, which is hard to say because then it's like I can see it on my camera just fine and like sometimes I can see it on my PC just fine. I have two different kinds of screens, um, an LCD and then a different monitor and like, oh, I can see it fine here and here, and then I upload it and you can't. So hopefully this works out really well. And if it does, then you'll obviously be watching this. But I want to thank you guys very much for um, sticking with me while I'm making my tutorials and designs and sharing them with you, because I do enjoy doing that. And of course, I appreciate that you guys were very understanding while I was sick and we're still kind of um, recovering, but um, it means a lot to me that you guys are so supportive. I definitely appreciate that. But thank you very much, and if you make some of these, I'd love to see them on my Instagram, which is at, which is at Crafting Fantastic, or on my Facebook, which is Feelings with Fear Crafting Fantastic. And of course, it would be awesome if you would um, subscribe to my channel here on YouTube, so you know when I come out with new things, and um, you can give my video a thumbs up. Everybody gave my sick video a thumbs down, so you can give this one a thumbs up. I would appreciate that. But thank you again, and I will definitely have more for you soon.